Hello friends, welcome to brand new tutorial of Learn Code by Sankal. In today's tutorial, we have demonstrated one restaurant management example for understanding the resilience 4J working. Resilience 4J is basically circuit breaker, so avoid to the cascade failure our, in our microservices resilience 4J is used. In our, in our old agency project, we have using history 6, but some key features of the resilience 4J, we have using resilience 4J. Resilience 4J giving much more in today's date. So, if you can visit Resilience for your official website, you can understand the, all these features. So, I we have creating in this pro, uh, tutorial uh, two new microservices and we have creating this uh, line by line code guides. If you understand the basic functionality and key features of the Resilience for J, then watch this video till end so you can understand the basic functionality and key features of the Resilience for J. And if you need my channel, then please subscribe my ch channel and press the like on and like and comment below. Okay guys, then we, uh, for time to complexity, we have created one uh, slideshow so for uh, understanding the lecturing for the features. After that, we have uh, going to the Eclipse idea and uh, we have creating the project. So without wasting any time, we have going into the, our uh, presentation. Okay guys, this is our presentation. So we have maximized that. Firstly, we have understand what is the resilience for the features and model. We have not done the some features, key features of resilience for the there are below. First is the circuit breaker to fault tolerance. Means uh, we have calling the one microservice to another microservices. Then second microservice is down. Means uh, we have fault tolerance in this inside the uh, resilience for the features. Means one microservice is down, then uh, first microservice stop calling the second microservices and some demo data will be shown in our uh, UI. Okay. Second feature will be the rate limiter. The rate limiter feature is a very uh, important guys. If you, uh, if our one microservice is down, then first microservice will continuously calling the uh, second microservices. At that time, we have to rate limit. Means uh, we have to configure that 10 request will be uh, over, then we have to stop the calling the microservice at particular, particular time. That is the rate limiter guys. Third uh, key feature will be time limiter. We have set time limit when calling the remote operation. Means firstly we have to rate limiter, then second will be time limiter. Time limiter means we have to configure the which rate of means one microservice is down, then uh, or anything uh, uh, you know, performing well in, my, in microservices. Then uh, we have to some critical microservices. Then we have to uh, set timeout like in uh, one minute 20 requests will be allowed. If uh, user will be hitting the 21th request, then it will be, it will be the giving the timeout error. Like like this the system we have to using the time limited. Fourth thing will be the retry mechanism. If our one microservice is down and second microservice will be uh, stop calling that microservices, then how much time it will be uh, not calling? Means we have to three, three, uh, 20 seconds or 30 seconds we have to cooling period. So we have to, after that cooling period, we have to retry to uh, call this microservices in known as, in known as retry mechanism. Then second will be the bulkhead. Avoid too many concurrent requests. In many uh, microservice architecture, two or three microservices calling one microservice simultaneously or concurrently. So about this situation, we have to bulkhead functionality in our resilience for j. Okay. Then uh, last functionality will be cache. Cache we have to know that to do store the temporary data. Means uh, we have to one microservices like you uh, dashboard microservices and it will be the fetching the data from the another microservices. Then uh, avoid to calling uh, again and again that microservices. We have some catch mechanism. Mean firstly desktop mar dash uh, dashboard microservices will be called the another microservices and getting the data and store in the catch. And after that in uh, some application uh, some application review means application UI uh, the cache data will be shown means it will be not uh, again and again hitting the second microservices this is the features of the uh, resilience project guys and uh, secondly we have to uh, we have create restaurant management system using in our uh, tutorial tutorial so this is the ar architectural diagram uh, consider that we have two microservices firstly customer microservices and secondly second will be menu microservices Okay, yes. then customer microservices will be the remotely and menu microservices is also remotely. Means customer will be required that give me the menu card. When for which uh, item we have to in our restaurant give me that item. So if menu, menu microservices up, then everything uh, it will be happy path. Means it will be giving the um, uh, menus, uh, menus JSON data. If menu microservices down, then what will be happen? This will be five, giving the 500 error, means internal server error. Some uh, something went wrong. This is the not uh, not uh, 
satisfaction of the customer service means our uh, application review will be down so we have to uh, configure the resilience project so if you if the menu, menu microservice is down it we have providing the some dummy data to the customer microservices for particular time particular time type this is the uh, main advantage of the resilience projects second uh, third uh, diagram with the block diagram is the uh, resilience project guys there are the three main uh, blocks guys firstly closed state then secondly open state and thirdly hop, hop open state mean firstly closed state mean means success means all things will be uh, happen good if any uh, we have to reaching the threshold value if you have reaching the threshold value to as 5 then we have to uh, hitting the five request stage means five request we have hitting three three request will be failed and uh, two request will be success then it will be reaching the timeout uh, threshold value then it will be going to the open state and open state we have to setting the reset timeout means uh, we have to set a timeout at uh, 30 seconds then uh, we have to not calling the first microservice to the second microservice it will be reset timeout timeout will be uh, uh, over then we have to calling the microservices at the half open stage means we have to again we have threshold the value means we have threshold like value like uh, 50 or 60 percent then uh, we have to calling it five time will we have to open uh, five time microservice call it and two times will be fail and three point time will be success then threshold will be well, value will be not reached uh, then it will be going to the success phase success stage means it will be going to the close state stage okay guys, this is the uh, three blocks of the resilience for you guys if you guys confuse that then we have to uh, practical exam guys uh, example guys and then we have to uh, not confusing anything either practical exam example guys okay then we have to start the coding means we have to close this and we have to open our eclipse idea and we have to start the coding okay guys then we have opening the eclipse idea okay guys this is our eclipse then we have created a new new project then we have going to file new and uh, here we are creating now we have creating new file new project spring starter project okay spring starter project okay then we have creating like menu micro menu services and we have our group name like this and this is our resilient project project and we have creating maven package and list like this same all these things are same guys then we have clicking on next then we have uh, spring web dependency needed guys and then jp dependency is needed and uh, we have last dependency like mysql driver okay the three dependencies uh, most important guys we have to configure guys then we have to clicking on next and creating new project okay then our project is creating it it will be taking to uh, two to three minutes our project is created guys then we have to open our project and we have going to the pom.xml file firstly guys inside pom.xml we have changing the our spring boot version and java version firstly so our spring boot version is 3.2.3 then we have not required this version we have version like 2.6.3 okay and our java version is uh, 17 we have not required a 17 version we have required like 1.8 okay then uh, all things will be okay guys then we have to uh, configure our uh, properties file so firstly we have configured our database properties file guys so uh, we have configuring the database properties file guys so we have to configure like uh, now building the project guys okay then we have configure our uh, firstly what is the error we have checking that okay then here we can see that we have to change this okay we have to change this and we have to uh, rebuild our project okay then we have configured some our database properties guys so firstly we have going like spring dot
okay guys then here you can our uh, uh, database compilation is completely clear guys then here you can create uh, some package structure for our code okay then uh, here i can opening my package structure so where is the package structure we have to update our project so we have getting package structure okay we have getting this and we have to replace this also so we are replacing this okay we have getting this package structure here we have we have already main method which is created guys then we have creating some uh, package structure guys then we have creating package like firstly we have creating like uh, package like entity or entity entity then uh, we have to replace this okay then second package we have required like dot controller and uh, third package we have required like uh, repository and um, okay then we have to replace this uh, four package if we have required guys uh, another another package we have required no we have not put in another package guys. then firstly we have create a one entity like menu entity okay then we have creating like menu okay then here we can give in the annotation like at the rate entity okay then we have to give like table like <coughs> tbl main okay this is enough guys then we have to um, import from java dot persistent guys then here you can give it some tags guys so firstly we have tag like id and at the rate generated value okay then tag name will be that private int id okay then second tag will be that private string string dish name okay second third tag will be that private string which category it will be uh, uh, will be cat category okay second thing will be that private string double price okay uh, then we have to import this id also in the order procedure okay our it will be completed guys then we have to create some uh, constructor and getter setter method so we have used, firstly we have create zero argument constructor then second we have create uh, source uh, constructor in all argument constructor then we have to create source uh, getter setter methods and last we have creating two string method okay source we have creating two string method okay this is our project class is completed guys then we have to uh, create one uh, repository interface okay then we have to create like interface like menu repository okay and it will be extend the gpa deposit okay and we have given the menu and we have given the int okay so we can give the int okay our repository will complete it guys. Then we have to give the annotation like at the rate repository. Okay. Then our repository layer are so completed guys. Then we have to uh, making some demo data in our uh, in our in our main class. Means uh, our application will be in it. Then we have to configure our some uh, demo data. So we can be opening the our this and here we can configure some demo data like this uh, we have configured demo data like uh, our spring uh, constructor means we have to construct this then we have to uh, some demo data so here we can configure our firstly 
एट वायर आवर एट वायर डॉट मेनू रिपोजिटरी मीन वी हैव टू सेव द डाटा ओके देन हियर वी कैन सेव दिस डाटा देन वी हैव टू क्रिएटिंग वन मेथड लाइक पब्लिक वाइड इनिट मेनू टेबल ओके देन वी हैव टू गिव द अनोटेशन लाइक एट द रेट पोस्ट कंट्रक्ट मीन अभी एप्लीकेशन इन इट इट विल बी मेथड विल बी ऑटोमेटिकली इनिशिएटेड ओके देन हियर वी कैन क्रिएटिंग लाइक मेन्यू रिपोजिटरी डॉट सेव ऑल एंड हियर यू कैन गिव द स्ट्रीम डॉट स्ट्रीम डॉट ऑफ स्ट्रीम डॉट ऑफ ओके एंड हियर यू कैन गिव द आवर मेनू मेनू कार्ड देन वी हो Why it give me error? Okay, we have completed this, these guys. Then we have to configure our uh, this our init micro service will be completed, guys. Then we have to init this data. Okay, guys. Then we have to uh, write some controller layer. So uh, so we have getting this data. Firstly, we have getting controller like class like. Here we can create new class like menu controller. Okay, this is menu controller. Then we have to giving the mapping like at the rate rest controller Okay, then second will be we have to like uh, request mapping. Like menu. okay and we have to create here we can create the controller layer okay then we here we can like add to wire like menu repository okay then here we can create one uh, method so firstly we have creating like get method get mapping and public click list of menu and we have creating like get menu method okay then we have to return this menu repository dot find all okay then here you can getting the menu we have put this all these things list like this okay then we have to second method we have to getting like or uh, by category then we have to get mapping public list of menu 
and get phone address. Get menu create okay then we have to here we can pass the at the rate path variable like Okay, return menu repository dot find by and here we can pass the category. Okay, this method is not created in repository layer, so we can create this method. Okay, then we have created this method in our repository layer. Okay, guys, our uh, all these things completed, guys. Then we have to. Uh, completed the our uh, menu menu service guys then we have to run this and we have to check that we have getting the menu on the on the database or not so we have firstly debug on uh, debug on spring boot application so we have opening uh, running the our application guys okay guys we have getting one error so we have seek that uh, okay we have an access denied uh, why it will be giving the access denied so we have seeking that uh, using password yes access denied for user okay so why this accessing denied we have, uh, we have one typo in our uh, username and password so we have getting this error okay then we have to return our project we have save, save our property file and then we have to return our project okay this see our project is created data is inserted okay then we have to rectify our database see guys our database is also created then we have to select this in our database also created then what we have to verify in our uh, postman we have to getting the data from the database or not so we have get request http 8080 slash menu okay then we have to hit this we have not getting okay we have getting data okay if we have giving the uh, path variable like uh, indian okay then we have getting one some indian puts only in we have giving giving like chinese what is the chinese we have giving the chinese No, all these things will be copied back getting the only Chinese menu okay okay we have getting Chinese menu okay all things is okay then we have to uh, create one com consumer microservice also so uh, I am creating that microservice guys uh, we have to uh, and you you have uh, you have to and uh, practice this then you have you have also create this microservice i have paused this video and create this microservice and we have to uh, meet you later after that creating this that, that microservices guys okay guys we have to stop this okay guys we have created customer microservice also so i will explain that how, how we can create this microservice in that inside palm xml we have not added any additional dependency we have only added the web dependency spring web dependency and we have changed the version and we have changed the our spring boot version so not any change in, the, in that so we have here we can edit the application or yaml file okay guys and here application of yaml file we have configured the port 8081 okay guys then secondly we have creating one menu class menu class 
okay mean in t2 class then we have to come getting the data from the uh, data from the uh, our producer microservice that will be the menu microservice okay we have creating a setter like this all this thing will be same inside the uh, mains method we have creating the uh, creating the this uh, logic guys this logic is basically we have creating the controller inside that class also we are not creating separate controller so here we can giving like uh, we have creating the rest control annotation mapping and after that we have uh, implementing the rest template and if after that we have creating one constant like customer service and we have creating the one url our base url will be the this this is our base url and then we have creating one method like display menu after that display menu here we can uh, here we can creating this display menu and uh, after that if the data will be present then we will be giving giving the data after data will be not present then we here we can create one another method to the uh, temporary data means one microservice is down then we have giving this data uh, this data is not currently populated then we have to not giving the uh, any computation in this uh, in this controller layer to the resilience project so okay then we have to run this project and check the what's happen if we calling the this microservice to the this microservice then firstly we have close this all these things and firstly we have run our menu microservices then we have to debug as opening boot application okay then our first microservice is running guys our menu microservice is running okay our menu microservice is up to running and we have to checking that we have getting the okay we are getting the all these things okay then we have uh, we have run our customer microservice also so run as spring boot application okay this service is running on port 8081 okay then we have configure our uh, next endpoint to the call this this microservice to the uh, first mi main microservice then we have creating like http local host 8080 slash we have a giving like customer service customer service slash display menu slash uh, and we have given the category okay here you can give the category okay and we have getting the uh, getting the request okay then we have trying to get the request okay not found why it will be giving the not found why it will be not found we have configured the port here we have configured the port here like 8081 and we have trying to 8080 why because that we had it will be good getting the not found we have hitting on 8081 so we have hit that see guys we have getting all these things if we have giving the uh, category man we have getting giving the category like indian then we have giving getting food like only indian okay all things will be okay guys means we have to happy flow is here but we have to close the uh, close our menu microservice means we have stop our main microservice then we have only things that we have uh, starting our uh, customer microservice main microservice is down so what will be happen we can see that we have to hitting this we have getting the 500 error this is very badly guys we have performance performance is very badly impacted by, by this error so we have configured the our res resilience project in our application so said so that we have Firstly, we have configure resilience for J. We have added some uh, dependency. Okay, here we can add dependency. And after that, adding the dependency, we have added one uh, our some comp uh, properties in our, uh, in our uh, application of properties file. Also. Okay, we have, have added the property file. I will explain you what is the property file. We have firstly we explain what is the permanent XML we have added. Firstly, we have added the actuator. Means we have live monitoring our microservice. We have needed the actuator micro actuator dependency. Second, we have to uh, AOP means accept oriented programming. Means which uh, which method uh, which logic run before the method, which logic run the after the method. This will be the AOP. And second will be the uh, resilience for the uh, resilience for the dependency we have needed in, in our project. Okay, 
then secondly we have configure our some properties in our yaml file so we have uh, enabling the actuator means we endpoint we have actuator we have enabling when we sell slash health we have to uh, configure in our always and in endpoint details will be show details always means any time we have to show the details and next we will have recent project some properties means which which uh, circuit breaker we have using uh, we have giving the circuit breaker name like customer service then we have to here we can see that we have uh, customer service name like customer service then we have giving the circuit breaker name like customer service okay then uh, here some properties like rate limiter fault tolerance like maximum threshold value uh, like that this is the registration indicator and uh, sliding window and uh, uh, here threshold value here is the threshold value okay here with the wait duration we have going the 5 seconds and uh, sliding will be, will be 10 and here we can uh, buffer time is, is 10 and fail, fail, thresh, fail rate threshold here we can give the 50% threshold value means if 5 requests will be hit it then 3 requests will be down and 2 requests will be success then it will be reached the threshold value okay then uh, we have here also retry, retry mechanism also added guys if, if the inner micro service is down then we have to uh, come, retry means after uh, 10 seconds it will be trying to retry okay this is the configuration guys and uh, second thing will be that we have to add the some logic inside our uh, here okay so here we can some adding some logic so here we can add the logic like at the rate circuit breaker and we have giving like name like user service customer service and uh, here we can give the customer service okay no need to any symbol code because that already have in string okay then we have to fallback method okay fallback method will be that we have already created this method then we have to giving that method name okay then we have to retry mechanism mechanism also added retry mechanism like name like customer service and like fallback method also also we have giving the same method okay okay this is the fallback me me mechanism guys then we have to configure our uh, some uh, dummy data this is the dummy data guys means we have to uh, configure some dummy data this is dummy data guys we have to giving the three menu to the if our menu microservice is done we have giving all three menu to the user this is the dal rice tapati and waste thali we have giving this three menu all, all, only so we have uh, written our project so here we can return our project then we have check that okay then we have to giving like another method like http customer service actuator actuator says health here we can getting the actuator health okay then we have getting the our, our micro service is up then we have getting the okay we have getting the micro service health means state will be closed then it will be happily working okay then we have to hit this endpoint hit this we have firstly we have checking that menu uh, micro service is down guys no no any request from the menu micro service then we have to hitting that so we have checked that okay we have getting uh, getting the data from our fallback method so here we can configure data that we have getting at the formal fallback method okay then we have to check the uh, health okay then we have to hitting at five time one two three four five okay See guys, this is the open state. Means it will be open state. Means it will be not calling the this microservices. If we have called this, then it will be automatically routing to the fallback method. It will not calling the microservices. If cooling period is down, then it it, it will be all, all calling the first microservice also. So we have now we have up the menu microservices. So here we can see that we have debug as Spring Boot application. Then we have to um, booting our menu microservices. Then we have to getting not this data. We have getting the real data from the database. Okay. 
uh, our main microservice is up guys then we have to check this our main microservice is up uh, configuration guys okay this main microservice is up guys we have to configure that okay our main microservice is up then we have to check that we have getting the data from the database or not okay we have getting the data if you are giving indian and we have giving the category like okay that's all guys our resilience uh, 4j is working guys uh, no any complex logic or no any uh, any hard logic in that we have simple logic we have giving the annotation like add the circuit breaker and we have giving the data and we have adding the some computation in our yaml file this is the our computation guys i will uh, attach the github link in link in description below guys so you can download this project and you have uh, study that project for your interview preparation guys uh, i hope you understand the resilience project working uh, if you are new in my channel then please subscribe my channel and press bell icon if you like you have like my video then comment below and uh, thank you guys bye take care